Howdy, my name is David. I'm a Coke Play Frontier from the Genesis Group. Just want to give you guys a market update. Now, this is pretty wild, but uh, uh, maybe it was like a week ago, week and a half ago. I was saying, you know, I expect the Bitcoin to make a move, and that they did. It was this move here that I thought maybe that was it. Though I did, I'm pretty sure on that video, I was like, you know, it's kind of disappointing. But it did make this move, which is a pretty nice move. Because I said it was due time. It was time for CoCoin to make a move. But here's the thing, though. Yes, from $0.08, cents, it almost doubled in price. Not bad. Nice, nice. But to be honest... Uh, unless Bitcoin makes a move, Cocoin's going to lose all those gains. Why? Because I said Cocoin was going to lose all the, all his gains from, like, from around here is when I just said, okay, that's it. Cocoin lost his trend. It's just going down. It's bear market for Cocoin. And every time Cocoin made a move like this, another move like that, or move over here like this, or this, what did I say? It's just going to continue to go down. It's going to make new all-time lows. Because it's just making, you know, new... The, the highs are lower highs, and the lows are lower lows. Um, and it's unfortunate. But never, like I've been telling all of you for months... And months. Well, anyway, it hasn't been a year, but I've been telling y'all maybe I don't know how how long has it been. Let's let's take a look. Man, when did I start telling y'all it's gonna be like game over? Maybe around this time. From May, around May. This is December. I've been telling y'all, Coke coins is gonna keep going now. And it has. And normally when I say around, it's around time CoCoin makes a pump, it does pump, you know. Unfortunately, I did miss out on this move though. But literally I've been so bearish that I don't even really try to risk or push those type of moves. Last time CoCoin did make that type of move, I gained on it. Oh well. Anyway, but let's look at Bitcoin because... Whatever Bitcoin does, the market's going to move with Bitcoin. And, you know, Bitcoin had, you know, a nice little little Christmas rally. And remember, I told you about that Christmas rally. It might not even last a month, right? Even before December even ends. And that's why I said there's no point of me trying to enter in. No point of me trying to sell anything. Just stick and watch. And... Hey, it had, it had a pretty good move, you know. Personally, I thought Bitcoin could, you know, almost get to that purple line. Or maybe even break it, get into the 19,000s maybe. But not even that, not even that. Granted, we still got two weeks left. But anyway, nothing special, right? So let's say I still expect Bitcoin to make new lows next year. I don't know when. Whether it's January, between January and March, or sometime in March, then I would think that CoCoin will the prices will get dragged down. You know, whatever under five cents from now. You know, I, it could go down to under three cents. Um, but and another thing that I mentioned, and I'm just being really honest with y'all, right? Unless CoCoin, the, the ecosystem, the platform, whatever, you know, they do something phenomenal. And that's if they make it through. And there's one other thing that kind of, or two things that make me a little worried. But anyway, I mentioned in the previous video, unless CoCoin does something really good from now till then, till the next bull run, uh, and depending on what CoCoin does during the bull run, CoCoin might not ever break its all-time highs of $7. 
You know what I'm saying? It just might not. And I showed it, showed y'all with um, with Neo or EOS or these other coins, right? They had a phenomenal move up, TRX, all of that back in 2017. But in this previous bull run, it didn't break its previous all time high. So if CoCoin follows. A move like that, then maybe next time CoCoin makes his next bull run, it might be like, you know, instead of seven dollars, it could be like four to five dollars or three something to five something. I don't know. You know? Um, that's just to me that that's the reality of it right now. So we'll see. Now there are two things that makes me a little worried about CoCoin. Okay, and one is something that uh, um, I think it's Mr. Choi, the the current chairman or you know CEO said is uh, he told me that he leveraged co coins to get a loan from the bank. Okay, and which, you know, it. a lot of companies do that. They will leverage stocks because what happens is if you sell your stocks, like you sell CoCoins, at that time when, you know, it was a bull market, prices are, you know, reaching new highs all the time. Well, not all the time, but, you know, they're reaching new highs. I think you sell them. What do you have to do? You have to pay a lot of tax, right? And, you know, I'm not exactly sure what the tax rules are for cryptocurrencies in Korea at that time. But I would imagine if he got a loan from the bank using CoCoins as leverage, it's because he figured if he sold his CoCoins, he would not want to pay taxes on them. Okay? And so in order to save your save yourself money from tax, you get a loan from a bank. You're wondering why get a loan from a bank? Because when you get a loan from the bank, you don't have to pay tax on the money that you get a loan on. That's why people get loans, right? I got a loan to buy my house, right? Uh, you know, I bought like so far this is my third third home in Korea, but I bought so bought so. Okay. Um, you know, and I, I've been blessed. I I make good uh, when I buy and sell homes. But this is the thing. Let's say, just just to make the number easy, let's say you need to get you you get a, a quarter million dollar loan from a bank. The reason why a lot of rich people will prefer to just get a loan. It's because if you have to save that money through work to buy a home. Well, let's say you live in the States. Imagine how much tax, how much money, how much additional extra money you would have to make beyond a quarter million dollars to save a quarter million dollars. Because, you know, every state, your, your taxes are different. But if you're paying like 30, 30, you know, 30 to 40, depending on how much you make in the 50% on your tax, on your money, well, just to save $250,000, what do you have to make? The high $300,000 to $500,000 just to save $250,000? And then think about the amount of time it takes to make that type, you know, save that type of money. You see, you're losing money. The point of getting a loan from the bank is because you get a quarter million dollar from the bank tax-free. You're not paying any taxes on the money that you get a loan on. And then it's finance where you're paying off the money, your loan, in whatever, like 25, 30, 35-year period. 
And what happens is, is not only the money tax free to buy the home that you got a loan on, but when you're paying back the money, yeah, you think you're losing money on interest, but anyone that really knows economics pretty, you know, decently well will tell you not really because you're paying back money with cheaper money because there's a thing called inflation. As long as you have a fixed interest rate for 30, 35 years, after like 10, 15 years, you're paying, you're paying your loan back with much cheaper money. So imagine like, yeah, in 2022, you get a loan at 3% fixed, okay, not 22, let's say in 21, 2021, you got a fixed rate loan at three point some percent. Let's say you're paying a thousand dollars a month, and that thing is set up for thirty five years. What happens is after twenty years, when you still have fifteen years left, that thousand dollar mortgage is no longer like a thousand dollars. Thirty twenty years from now, a thousand dollars will feel like it's like four hundred dollars, three hundred dollars. That you're paying back. Yeah, the number is the same, but because of inflation and increase in wages to match inflation, even though it never matches exactly the same, is wages tend to not keep up with inflation, but still it'll still the wage, your salary will still be higher than what it is now, you know, your wage 20 years from now. And so that thousand dollar mortgage feels a lot less of a burden. Why? Because you're paying back the mo- you're paying back your mortgage with cheaper dollars or cheaper currency, regardless of what country you're in. And so that's why you're gaining on the loan as long as you have a steady income or you have you know some assets that bring you steady revenue. okay? And that's why people get a loan. It saves you time. That the time it will take for you to save up the money. It saves you a lot on tax because you have to earn a lot of money, then have the government strip a lot of money from taxes, and then you save that to save up that type of money. And then when you pay back the loan, because you're paying it back in such a long period of time with inflation, you're paying it back with much cheaper currency. So let's say a dollar in two thousand. 22 has a certain amount of purchasing power but if it's a 35 year loan just even 15 years from now that dollar 15 years from now might only have 50 cent 40 cent purchasing power compared to what the dollar is now in 2022 like you would know your dollar back in 2019, imagine the purchasing power of what $10 had in 2019 compared to the purchasing power it has now in 2022, December 2022 with all the freaking inflation we had the last two, three years. You understand what I'm saying? And so that's why you're paying it back with cheaper money. That's why they get a loan. So... When I I forgot which um, CEO was it, whether it was from me, Medium, but I think it was the original, the, ch- the chief ar- architect CEO, when he said he leveraged Coke coins to get a loan from a bank. For me, I understood that. I understand the concept of getting a loan. That's why I get a loan to buy a home and sell and all of that. That's why even banks, they'll be happy to give me a loan. Because I got cash, you know, because I work my ass off. I work, I wake up like five in the morning, you know, three, four times a week to teach morning class before I, I, I teach at my regular job, you know. And so, but here's the thing. So put all that to the side. So I understand why he got, a, he leveraged co-coins to get a loan. Because he doesn't have to sell his co-coins. He's holding on to them. He doesn't have to pay tax on them. Then he could pay back the loan with much cheaper money. I grasp that. I understand that. It makes sense. Okay. But here's the thing. He leveraged co-coins at whatever price at the time 
but I, unless they have some special contract, who knows what the, and this is the thing, I don't know what the contract is between how these code coins were leveraged. Maybe the contract could say like, no matter what, until this time, no matter how low code coins go in price, you don't have to pay some special additional to cover, you know, the the devaluement of code coins until, you know, the, the whole loan is paid off in that duration of time. Or is it where, yeah, maybe he got, um, he, he leveraged code coins when it was back at $5. Who knows? I mean, it's just theory. I don't know. And then maybe if code coins go down under $2, he would have to pay a certain amount of money. And if code coins goes under like 70 cents or 80 something, some cents, you have to pay some amount of money. It goes down to like, you know, 14 cents, 13 cents, you have to pay a certain amount of money. Is that in the realms of possibility? Yeah. And so, you know, I don't know what that contract is, but that is something that does worry me. Because he leveraged it when it was in dollars. And I'm pretty sure it was more than a dollar or two. Right? And now, I mean, the thing went down all day to like eight cents. Okay? What does that mean? I'm, I would imagine he had to pay some money back to the bank. Right? To cover some of the, the loan. So... That's worrisome. That's worrisome. So, you know, but I did mention in a previous video in the past when I talked about this as well, he, he did have a group of experts that he hired, or not hired, but whatever. I guess they're part of a team. They give him advice. I'm pretty sure he's paying for the advice. And so I'm pretty sure they explained and tell them what routes he can do. He can do this or that and probably try to help, you know, help him meet the right people to make everything go through. And so, yeah, I would imagine that's the case. But I don't know. You know, I don't know. So that's one I wanted to talk about in terms of one thing I worry. Another thing I do worry is around this time. Around this time. It just probably happened before. But now this is where like. Especially with a, a lot of. It's not just CoCoin. It's going to be with all the other coins. That have a similar system with CoCoin. Where you know. People would. Um, and I've talked about this. So many times before. Where you have so many people that. Go into CoCoin as an investment and not into getting into the ecosystem. Because CoCoin is supposed to be an ecosystem. In other words, you CoCoin is the currency for the ecosystem of CoPlay. The Korean won is the currency of the ecosystem of the country, South Korea. The U.S. dollar is the currency of the ecosystem of the United States of America, the country United States of America. Now, if I go back to the States with Korean won and I switch, I switch Korean won to the dollar. And let's say for whatever reason, the dollar starts going down. Well, and I and so my dollars lose purchasing power in case I want to buy stuff back in Korea, which now that I feel like I lost purchasing power. Well, I can't go to the U.S. government and tell them, hey, I lost like 10 percent purchasing power because your currency went down. I want 10 percent additional U.S. dollars for what I have. It doesn't work that way. Just like if someone switched their U.S. dollars to Korean won a year ago, 
and then or they switched the U.S. dollars to any currency really about a year ago. And then when the U.S. dollar was at its peak, they saw that they lost 20% of their purchasing power where they can't go to the government of that currency saying, hey, I want 20% more of your currency to make up for the loss because it's losing grounds to the U.S. dollar. It doesn't work that way. But I've said it so many times, you have so many people, they didn't look at Coke coin to use Coke coins into the ecosystem on the platform, but as an investment where they just wanted to make money, sell their Coke coins and roll on out. And so, and that's not just with Coke coin, that's with all these other ecosystems that this is when, you know, I'm, I think I've read an article about it months ago and I think I just saw one recently, but it's the same one from months ago. But you're going to start seeing people who will try to sue CoCoin. Uh, and, and you know, you'll see investigations. Or, or not investigations, but people asking to investigate or file complaints legally. Not just on CoCoin, but all these other platforms as well. But that's what I'm expecting. Now... What worries me is is not about CoCoin, if they understood the platform and how the ecosystem worked, which I've said in so many of my other videos, just like that. I can't go to the U.S. government. or If I'm American, I can go to the Korean government. I can't go to any government of the currency and say, hey, I want 10% more, 20% more. It doesn't work that way. And... I'm more worried about, and like, is what did some of these other people who make contents for CoCoin or were trying to bring people into CoCoin said to the people they brought in for them to join the platform and, you know, stake into CoCoin? Because depending on what they said, they could get in a lot of trouble. So that's what I'm worried about. That's number two. Is what did these other people say? You know? I'm also worried about what did these other people say about prices of CoCoin. You know, for me, this is why I always said I don't care about the news so much. I focus more on the charts. And because I looked at the charts and I've experienced a previous bear market, it's why someone like me, I'm a vet, I can say, yeah, for $7, it can even go under $0.03. Because I've seen stuff like that in the last bear market. That's why I can say it now, even for CoCoin, even though I like the project. Um, but <laughs> you could like it. That's not, so what? The market doesn't care what I like. You get what I'm saying? That's why the value is where it's at now, like at $0.08. Cents. Um, and it, I would imagine it's going to get lower. But then I don't know what the other people are saying. You know? And I say even Coco can even go under $0.02. Cents, right? So I don't know what these other people said. And then the problem is, is then... I don't know what would happen because of what the other people said and how they're, how they're connected to or not to the administrative side of CoCoin. So those are two things that I do worry about is what did other people say about CoCoin to try to get people to join the platform, the ecosystem. And... Um, the leverage from the bank well, using co-coins. So, yeah, those are those are two things I do worry about the most. And I'm, you know, and when it comes to the survival of co-coin or you know the KOK ecosystem. So. You know, but uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. You know, however, like I said, 
uh, I would imagine the the CEO of Kokoi, they hired a you know like an all star team for advisors on their advisory board. So I imagine they'll they'll manage. They'll manage is what I'm guessing. Um, is what I'm thinking. And you know, like I under you know the other videos that I've made about the ecosystem and all the currency swaps and all that. Like, yeah, I know what it is, but then I'm more worried about these other people. I don't know what kind of crap they might have said. And so, um, but I would imagine the administrative side, like if I know, they know, because it's their platform, it's their ecosystem that they created. So uh, we'll, we'll figure, you know, yeah. So I'm not, I would imagine that's going to be okay. But only, t we'll, we'll see, we'll see, you know. Um. So I am still on more of. Uh, I, I think, and remember, I am not your personal financial advisor. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you what I'm doing and what I'm thinking. I give you all reasons why. But I, I still think Cocoin's gonna survive this bear market. Um. But you know, we'll we'll see. That's just me. You know what I'm saying? Um, and yeah, I'm just waiting for, you know, Bitcoin to go down more to give me an opportunity to maybe scoop up some Cocoin, you know, um, and other altcoin, you know. So that's it. I mean, look at Bitcoin already down under 17,000. Doesn't look good. You see this weekly candle. If Bitcoin falls down like harder. And then you have a gravestone doji candle. That prints. Next you know. Next week. That's not a good sign. Like it's not a good sign. So we'll see. Um, but yeah. I still think Bitcoin. Will hit new lows next year. It's going to drag Cocoin down. To make new lows next year as well. That's just my opinion. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But for some reason. I tend to be more right than wrong. Okay. So yeah. I just want to share that with y'all. About what I do. The two things really I do worry about. Um, and let me know what y'all think. You know. But also I. You know like I said. I'm not your financial advisor. I'm not telling y'all what to do. Uh, I'm just saying what I think, or yeah, or what I'm doing, or what I think is happening. I give y'all reasons why, but um, I think Cocoin will will make it through the bear market, you know, and that's that. All right, everyone, please stay safe. Like I keep saying, I I think the economy will still continue to get worse before it gets better. Um. Please be spiritually healthy, mentally healthy, physically healthy. Uh, that's it. You know, make sure you surround yourself around the right people. I'm praying for all of y'all in Jesus' name. God bless all of you. Okay. If you can work, work hard. Um, yeah, just, just work hard. You know, I, and build a strong community. Uh, I still think you're going to have a worse food shortage in 2023 than 2022. Um, in certain areas, the inflation will be worse in 23, 2023 than 2022. And the economy will be worse, in my opinion. All right. So, yeah. Just letting y'all know what I think. All right, everyone. God bless and coke on.